Hey guys, and welcome back to Shovel Knight Spectre of Torment. Ah, uh, it's a new week, a new recording session, but a not so new location to run through. And uh, is it me, or does Pride More Keep seem less glittery than the days of yore? That's true, it seems like there's actual work being done on it. So, I'm guessing, since this is before the events, obviously, where a King Knight took over, maybe the other uh, King is actually trying to renovate the place. And I guess, you know, when King Knight moved in, he's like, well, this isn't gaudy and stupid enough, so let me go ahead and fix that real fast. <laughs> well, d don't forget, like, King Knight's crown, I think, is made out of full skull, which is more perfect uh, a thing for him than I could ever come up with as a writer, you know? I'm not a writer, I'm just a commentator. Alas, alas for poor Ed Tom. I'm noticing again, like, you know, I was, like I said before, I was watching a few bits of this ahead of time. It's now that you have the judgment rush, you're actually going to do a lot of, see, right, right here. That's actually a little great bit of sequence breaking that uh, personally would never have come to mind for me because I used the judgment rush like a few times and I instantly dismissed it for having any potential use, thus proving I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Alright, cards on the table, mate. Besides the Will Skull, what was your most used curio in Spectra Torment? Hmm. <sighs> I have to say, uh, trying to remember the ones off the top of my head, I would guess the throwing site because, uh, you know, with every time that I have played, uh, you know, any of the Shovel Knight campaigns, I need a more direct projectile just to kind of zone from a distance and, you know, obviously fire one. And then for me in the, this particular campaign, it was the throwing site. Beyond that, that and the Will Skull, I would have to say the other curio I used beyond that the most would probably have to be, um,. Probably the uh, the wall scythe, you know, the scythe that kind of travels along walls and platforms, oh, yes, things yeah. like that. Yeah, great for picking up gold, great for taking out some particular enemies. Not as useful as it could be, but still, you know, it's got its uses. I got you. Nothing to add to that. I just merely like seeing what curios people use to go throughout Spectre of Torment. It's always interesting to see how people customize their Shovel Knight experiences, you know? Speaking of which, um... Uh, I might as well talk about the armor again that you're using. Uh, now that the uh, comments for like the uh, first few parts were going on YouTube, some people actually compare this armor's color scheme to like the Green Goblin. And you know what? Now that I look at it, I can yeah. actually kind of see. Yeah, I can kind of see what they were going for here. I don't think it works still because I think the thing is about the Green Goblin is that, well, the Green Goblin always has sort of had a stupid costume. I mean, this is a costume that he will still wear, even though it's like 2017. This was a costume that was made in like the 80s, I think. I don't even remember what decade the Green Goblin was introduced. But here in 2017, he's still running around his fucking booties, and he's got his little <laughs> underoos, that kind of thing going on. I guess it's a little more dignified with the armor, but if I'm going to be wearing armor... I'm going to have cool colors for my armor, you know, like, uh, the default uh, color scheme is pretty good. I like the ghostly garb kind of thing, maybe silver or blue or that kind of thing, but green and purple still doesn't quite work for me as well when it comes to armor, at least. Well, we all have our preferences, I suppose. I just went with the thing that uh, would allow me to play the game the easiest, because I'm not just a gamer, I'm a let's player. Put that on a t-shirt and cringe yourself to death, why don't you? Man, I want to see that, I legit, I legit want to see somebody try to rationalize that on a resume. Because if you're good, and trust me, I'm good at writing resumes because I've had to bullshit a ton of stupid shit on mine, alright? Oh, yeah. But, I want to see someone legit try to take a Let's Play experience and try to use that for like a job. Like, how would you phrase that? How would you say, oh, um, used creative social media and video making <laughs> properties to build brands and that kind of shit. And you know, if you word it right, if you legit word it right to a point where you're just like a flim flam artist trying to make shit up, I bet you can legit get somewhere with that. I want to see that on a resume and see if that's actually got like a good job because you need to sign me up on that shit too. I think I actually contacted my partner company once and asked if it would be feasible to put on like a, like a resume or a CV or whatever. Uh, the response was not exactly positive, <laughs> but I never expected it to be. You know, I'm, I'm many things. I'm not delusional for the most part, I swear, honestly. I will make this Let's Play business work, Mom. You've got no idea. It's about to <laughs> pop the fuck off. Yeah, man, I really do think that there's going to be a huge industry behind this, but it'll just be a matter of time before you're able to do that, right? <laughs> I think that was the most pathetic death you'll ever see in this room. Just slight rule at the wall, whoops, D-pad malfunction. I don't know if I've already brought this up, but being a revenant, I'm not really sure where that gets you the ability to wall climb. Like, I, I like it makes sense for, like, oh, I can summon the dead, oh, I can use magical shit. 
but wall running doesn't really seem like an ability a zombie normally has, you know? <sighs> well, rule of call, I suppose. And, you know, it sets him apart from uh, Shovel and Plague Knight, so it's alright in my book, much like the books we're using here to create ethereal platforms that I don't see you commenting on. Speaking of which, um, I guess I well, might as well talk about it in general. Uh, what do you think about this particular version of uh, Prime War Keep? I didn't find it, like, too difficult. I like... It didn't feel different enough for me, you know, compared to, like, the other stages, which feel way more different, but the remix is decent enough to kind of mix things up and keep it interesting. I like it. It's not my favorite stage. It's not my least favorite stage. It would probably fall much like the part itself, right in the middle, <laughs> so to speak. But uh, King Knight does have a few interesting quirks to uh, his Spectre of Torment fight, so uh, let's get cracking and we'll see if he's been slacking. Uh, Kraken, is that supposed to be a Treasure Knight reference? <sighs> no. Not everything I say is a fucking pun, okay? You people have to get this through your heads. <laughs> I do like how at this point, King Knight is basically taking everything over, but he's just a lazy sack of shit. And, uh, Spectre Knight is like, alright, you need to just get your ass back to work. He's like, no, I'll just fight you instead so I don't actually have to do any work. Look at this shit here. He can make the uh, the columns and whatnot, or well, the floor, I suppose, rise up and down, create bottomless pits, and uh, I don't think we'll get to see much of it, but he can also call in the rats to fly on, which is pretty funny. Oh, I saw some of them right there. Yeah, uh, I'll be honest with you, like, King Knight needed, like, a huge kind of difficulty boost. This does enough to kind of make him a little bit more challenging. Still really not that hard, though. No. Nah. No, I just like him. He's the fool of the Order of No Quarter, and I'm actually really looking forward to seeing how he plays and uh, what his story's about. You mentioned it was about him getting his treasure back. I don't know. We'll see. If you noticed there during the dialogue, I've it's already gone from my mind. I have the worst kind of ADD, I suppose. Well, not OCD, but I digress. But uh, it was alluding to the fact that, oh, King Knight has been ordered to do stuff, but he's just not getting on with it, so to speak. I guess maybe during that on the side, he's kind of doing his own little quest. I guess that's what happens. So we'll find out whenever they get to that campaign. Yeah. Now, I was told, uh, you know, again, another thing I learned from the comments, but I, if you don't get the Caltrops uh, in the first, you know, version of this stage, apparently they will just give it to you, like, at the beginning of the second one, which is a neat little touch, although it makes me wonder why they didn't just give them the Caltrops to begin with in the first version, but I don't know. Uh, I don't know. What's the word I'm looking for here? Positive feedback, a, a, a lore, a bit of bait to get the character interesting to keep the player playing. I'm just mixing garbled words together at this point, I'm sorry. I see you there. You're not as slick as you think you are. I still think it was pretty good that, um, you know, the uh, one of the directors for today decided to make, like, an enemy instead of giving in to the urge and just making another fucking boss character, because I'll be honest with you, if I don't end, I'd make my own boss character, of course, of course it'd would. be the stupidest shit. Yeah. Well, you don't have to agree with it being the stupidest shit, but it probably would be the stupidest shit. You're always looking on the negative side of things. See, this is why you were kicked out of the group in the first place. Negative opinions. Nah, of course, and you know, all the other negative opinions definitely did not influence it whatsoever. <laughs> uh, Alright, I think uh, we've got a boss fight coming up, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it sure seems like one of those situations where a boss occurs. Uh, the amulet. Or is it more of a locket? Hmm. Oh, shield knight! I was thinking it was more of a medallion, you know, like uh, the one Higgins von Higgins, you know, uh, warrior of legend, <laughs> managed to take that one time. Oh my god, all you have to do is say that name, and I'm sent flying back to the memes of yore. <laughs> Although, you know, <clears throat> I didn't expect this, but I do think this is really cool, actually. We do get a Shield Knight boss fight here, and it's a nice little touch because, you know, I've always kind of wondered how Shield Knight would play. I don't remember if that's going to be, like, one of the stretch goals eventually, like, playable Shield Knight. I would love to see that personally and kind of see how, you know, she would do all the platforming and stuff. I think, a sh like, a Shovel Knight and Shield Knight cart mode would be best, because, uh, I'm, I've seen videos of people playing co-op and they're always bouncing off their compadre, so just to have, you know, Shield Knight's shield bounce ability, uh, like you see in the true final boss of Shovel of Hope, would be pretty neat. As for the boss fight with Shield Knight herself, I've have definitely done better. This was a bit of a clusterfuck, but, uh, eh, I did it without dying, so whatevs. 
I have to admit, a shield line is actually a little bit more challenging than I first originally believed. Like, you know, she's got good defensive ability. She likes to do that, you know, charging star. Back there, my strategy was to kind of lay down the caltrops and try to get her to run into it. But it's very easy to get accidentally tagged by your dashing attacks and stuff flying down from the ceiling. You do want to be a little bit more defensive here because if you're not watching what you do, she can whittle down your life actually pretty fast. Oh, yeah. It's mostly just the defending from the front and me spazzing out all over the place and trying to jam me my way to a victory that uh, made me lose as much life as I did. But, uh, oh, this tower has certainly seen better days. Are we about to see what fate befell Shield Knight at the start of Shovel of Hope? Oh, I guess it's some idiot trying to kill her. No wonder that everything went off bad and got started into motion. Oh, oh, Donovan, just listen to Luan. He's been your friend for ages and he's got a fancy beard. You ever have such an intense boss fight that the entire tower just starts to fucking crumble? You know, this isn't even a final kind of boss, this just gets metal up in here. Oh. Oh. Maybe you should have been Wing Knight or Fly Knight, man. <laughs> uh. Not the most happy of endings for Donovan, especially the one. He just gets shanked and then, like, a bunch of rubble falls on him. He's not getting a second chance out of that, I'll tell you what. Yeah, you ever have a time where you're just, you know, sitting on the edge of a tower, you're recollecting? You remember that time I fell off of something really tall and died? Those were the <laughs> days, right? Oh, uh, good times. Good times. You know, it's funny, the Curio that I used a lot in my initial playthrough is the only one I think we won't be seeing in this playthrough, and I might as well just describe it now, because obviously you're not going to see it. I forget the actual name of it, but it allows you to create one of those guys on the right there, uh, who fires projectiles, and when you upgrade it, he gets like more health and whatnot. Pretty good for picking off targets from a distance while you go in and cause damage up close. Oh yeah, that's like the, um, <clears throat> yeah, my name is probably wrong too, but I know what you're talking about, like the skeleton sentry. Skeleton Archer, that kind of thing. It's pretty good if you you need like a platform for the summon to land on, but it can just kind of hang back and just endlessly shoot until it gets destroyed. It's pretty good for chipping in a little bit of damage every now and then. You want to use it when you have like more of a flat arena though, because if you're fighting in an arena with like multiple platforms, uh, the boss is probably going to be moving around crazy enough that you won't really be able to get as many shots in as you would like. But it definitely has its uses, and I do like using it. Okay. Which, how, how, what would you give it out of 10, since I'm pushing one subject here? Um, good out of 10? Acceptable out of 10? I don't know. <laughs> I love that animation. Ha! Ah, bring me more beer, peasants! See, he asked for more chickens, but really they're all just the bones that Spectre Knight has been finding. Hey, can I get a chicken with meat over here? Ah, uh, we don't have meat. We have Mott, which is a meat substitute. I can get you some of that. Ugh, I'd rather eat spam, honestly. Well, spam is also kind of a meat substitute, so I guess either way, we're screwed. Yeah, it's a quality substitute if you follow certain circles, but uh, I guess that does it for this part, guys. Let's have a quick chat with Rees here, who's still calling as a puppet. I dislike that. And, uh, well, only a few more stages to go. So next time, we're going to go visit the Lost City and see what Mole Knight is up to. Come back later today. We'll have another episode for y'all. Bye-bye for now.